they're walking along, they get to the bar and they're drinking and it's awesome. Yes. And they're getting shit faced. <laughs> they're playing darts. <laughs> They're ordering like, you know, buffalo wings and, you know, potato skins. <laughs> Satan gets the courage to get this girl's number at the end of the bar. It's like a perfect night. Ooh. Hello, everybody, and welcome to 500 Open Tabs. I'm Kava Teherian. <laughs> and I'm Hannah Hillam. I, you didn't prepare me welcome. for this. <laughs> Yeah, I don't prepare you for anything. Welcome back to the show. Hannah, you've been gone on the road. You've forgotten the insanity and the chaos that is 500 open tabs. And now you have to come back to work. Yeah, this is work. And host again. Look, yeah. it's only work if you make money. So this is my passion. That's true. <laughs> it's a passion project. Yeah. Uh, of course, Hannah's been gone on her book tour, yep. crisscrossing around the United States, going to all different places, shaking hands, kissing babies, trying to win votes. Stop bringing your for... babies to my book tour, okay? <laughs> <laughs> if I have to kiss another infant. No, I, yeah, I've been going around. I went to Pasadena. I went to Portland. I've never been to Portland before. Mm -hmm. That was nice. That was really fun. Nice. Uh, then, yeah, and uh, I have one more tour date left, which is uh, Salt Lake at the King's English the day after Halloween on All Hallows Ooh. Day. Sawen. Sawen, yeah. Right. Sawen, I think. Sawen. Anyway, yeah, so thank you for of coming. Of course, this ends, yeah, this ends your your uh, your tour date, so mm -hmm. now you're back for good. I'm, unfortunately, I'm never leaving here. Us. I'm in this room. You've made me stay here. You've locked me in here. It's just podcast prison. Podcast prison. All podcasts are a prison. <laughs> anyway, so, oh, before we start, I wanted to say thank you to our guest host for filling in, Alyssa, amazing, and of course, the Triple Cave episode. Which had, I mean, was it like the Spider Man meme banger. where you're just pointing at each other? It was just the whole time, just like, hey, 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 hey. hey. How, does, how did everyone mess uh, your name up? Uh, that was exactly. cool, though. So that was a lot of fun. Thank you, of course, to all those uh, Kavas and Alyssas. Thank you. I should say there might have been another Alyssa who was, we, we hired a second Alyssa to edit the Alyssa episode. We keep just her so consistent. in the attic like Bart's <laughs> twin in the Treehouse of Horror, my favorite episode. Yes. Uh, anyway, thank you to everybody as well. It's nice to have you back, Hannah. Uh, thank and you. Seeing as how you have not had to do a tab for a long time, do you want to go first, or do you? What do you want to do? Hmm. How about you go first? Okay, I will. So, of course, we're releasing this on the day before Halloween. Mm -hmm. So it's Halloween Eve. Actually, I guess is there is a it. there is a uh, name for that. I was in my studies. I found out that. Uh, the day before, hold on, it has an actual name, and it is called, in Jersey, they call it, mis uh, sorry, New Jersey, not the island Jersey. They call it Mischief mm -hmm. Night, which is when they just- Mischief they Night. They go around like wrecking stuff in Detroit. Nice. And New Jersey. Uh, in Detroit or Jersey? Both. New Jersey, yeah. yeah. Okay. Nice. Um, well, as such, I'm wearing my holiday appropriate track jacket. <laughs> oh, you got one for every season, don't you? I got one for every season. I was so excited when I found this one. Um, so originally, I had a non-Western focused tab for this episode for Halloween. But wow. I started reading about the subject that I ended up choosing, and I decided that I had a moral obligation to you and this podcast to pursue this train of rabbit holing, or tabbit holing, <laughs> as we like to call it. So, uh, Okay. You, now, you owe this to me? Is that what you're saying? You've a, a... I just I had a moral obligation oh. to per, to cover this subject okay. because it, you'll understand. Uh, so it might be a bit base for all you Halloween heads out there, but I looked into. <gasps> <laughs> for those of you not watching the YouTube, he just like Superman ripped his like tracksuit open, and he has a jack o' lantern face on his shirt. Do you like that shirt design? I do. Did you do that? Yeah, so last night, like a kid in, you, uh, like who had to, you did this last <laughs> like a kid night? who had to do, <laughs> like a book report. Um, oh my god. Yeah, yeah, like uh, I need to go get a piece of of foam core yeah. to like do my poster design at ten p.m. At ten p.m., I was like, because I assumed Sarah would have some sort of an orange t-shirt, and I was like, do you have an orange t-shirt? She's like, you know, weirdly enough, I don't have one. Oh. And she was like, you should just make a jack o' lantern one. And I was like, she's like, you can do that pretty easily. I was like, okay, let's do that. So I went to Joanne's. It's like three dollars for <laughs> an orange t-shirt. Amazing. And then of course Sarah's got a cricket, and she loves any excuse to cricket Use something. Use the cricket, so yeah. We, 
we used the cricket. We made it. So thank you to Sarah for uh, producing the shirt that I designed in Adobe Illustrator. I was very excited to do it. And of course, I got hyper fixated yeah. and stayed up way too late on that drawing. But would not anyway, have yes. thought you would do anything else. <laughs> what? Why wouldn't you? Consistent. Yeah, you're in. You're nothing but consistent. You? You're anything not but consistent. Thank you. Just... Uh, anyway, so love it. This tab is going to be about jack o' lanterns and their origins. Uh, and let me tell you. This is fun as shit, and I went into some weird little side quests, and I know you're going to love it. Okay. <laughs> I just made a strange sound, <laughs> like someone who just saw like the Beatles live in 1960-something. It's the Beatles, but with jack-o'-lanterns on top of their heads that are flaming and like on fire, what? and they're just throwing their head at everybody in the audience. Oh, I thought you meant that's actually part of the history. I was about to get real excited. That's what happened at the Beatles concert on the Ed Sullivan Show. They, oh, right. they lopped their heads off and mm-hmm. threw them at people. Anyway, okay, Disgusting. getting very off track. Blood everywhere. Uh, so again, I had not read into anything about jack-o'-lanterns prior to this. So as it, as it seems, jack-o'-lanterns are in fact of Irish origin. Mm-hmm. Did you know this? Yes. You did know. Okay. But so it's jack-o'-lantern. I figured because it was like, um, I only know like one thing about the history of jack-o'-lanterns and I'm sure you're about to get it to it right now. But other than that, I don't know anything else. Okay. Yeah. And I don't know why it never occurred to me. I guess the way I've always see it, seen it written I just assumed it was like some random like string of words, but it never occurred to me to be like the O apostrophe yeah. lantern. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like O'Brien or O'Doyle or whatever. So it's Jack O Lantern. Jack of the of lantern. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, basically Jack of the lantern. But I'm, so I'm happy to report there is lore that explains this. Uh, but before I get into all of that, a little bit of context. Okay. So without getting into the holidays' whole history, just like a sort of primer, the Celts celebrated their New Year's Day, which they called. What'd you call it? Sam- Samhain. Samhain. It's Samhain, I think. Samhain on November 1st. Uh, and on what, what we now refer to as Halloween, spirits, fairies, demons, and other creatures were thought to walk the earth as they traveled to the afterlife. And in order to ward off this basket of dead <laughs> deplorables, <laughs> the Celts wore costumes, of course, to scare them away. And additionally, they carved scary faces in- into vegetables like uh, beets, potatoes, and turnips of which they had uh, typically a lot of them lying around after a harvest. That is, of course, until there was a giant famine beginning mm. in 1845, exacerbated by a certain government, but oh, I, more on that later. I was about to say, <laughs> I'm so proud of my my ancestry right now. Carving vegetables and being creepy in the woods. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Oh, this is all you. So lastly, metal lanterns weren't exactly cheap. Oh, right. And, you know, they're made out of metal and shit. And if you're some poor Irish farmer, you had to make by with what you got. You know, if your kids are tugging at your shirt being like, Dad, can we have lantern? He's like, dude, we have lantern at home. (laughs) We have have lantern. Lantern at home sucks, Dad. (laughs) It's true. It does. But you get to carve it into like an evil looking dead face. Yeah. That's fun. You throw a little candle in it. That's kid's best. That is Um, a kid's dream right there. Yeah. So this is sort of the loose... There's a lot of stuff on this, but that's that's kind of like roughly where it comes from. Cool. Um, and that's that's sort of the practical reason. But um, the reason why people carve faces into turnips with a fire inside is not about practicality. That's not why we're interested in it. We're interested in it in terms of how insane it gets. Yeah. How did it go from turnip carving to pumpkins? Yeah. So let's go back. Where are we going back to, Hannah? Oh. I don't know. What? Oh, I don't know. I thought it was going to... Back to the bogs of rural Ireland. Ah! <laughs> yes. <laughs> woo, woo, woo. Ah, oh, you're speaking my language. That's why I told you. I was like, this is, this is a bog story. This is my favorite thing. For those of you who haven't seen the bog bodies at the Dublin library, I think it's the library, go look at them. Yeah. Go look at them. Go look at them. They're so crazy. They might tie into this. Oh, my gosh. Shut, shut up. Okay, I'm, I'll stop I'm talking. So Podcast Look, over. Look, I'm excited. It's funny because this episode, I was like, I'm going to be calm and I'm not going to freak out a bunch, but it's, you know. Why wouldn't you freak out a bunch? That's the whole appeal. I don't know. How do I How do I know to push harder in the podcast if you don't freak out? If you're just going to give me like a flat Duh. reaction. That's like actors. Acting is reacting. Podcasting is re-podcasting. Okay. I don't know. No, you're right. You're right. <laughs> anyway, Boggs. Boggs of r- rural island. Do I have your attention? Yes, Pete Boggs. <laughs> You know what? If I yes, peat bogs. If my family had stayed in Wales and Ireland or whatever, we'd just be digging bogs right now. We'd just be digging peat bogs for nice. fuel. I know it. I feel it in my heart. Yeah, I feel it. So in the early 1600s, the legend of a shadowy figure began to arise known as Stingy Jack, a.k.a. Jack <laughs> the Smith. 
AKA oh. Drunk Jack, AKA Flaky Jack, no. AKA Miguel Sanchez, AKA Dr. <laughs> Nguyen yep. Von Fuck. Anyway, I don't know. That's a Simpsons joke for you. Should have uh, known it. Stingy Jack was a fellow blacksmith. Hey, oh. And Lantern. A total bastard. Oh, well, <laughs> yeah. So another, obviously another thing I immediately you have love this guy. Exactly. <laughs> I'm like, I love this guy. He's the best. Total <laughs> bastard and a blacksmith. Also, bit of a drunk. Mm. And he used to raise hell everywhere he went yes, he and was a great trickster. Love him. His reputation spreads far and wide everywhere. People know about yeah. it. And it went so far that even the devil himself was like, I wish to subscribe to your newsletter, the Jack. The devil flagged I'm into him? This. It's the opposite. The devil was like, who is this dude, Jack? I, like, I'm like, i following you on TikTok uh, and watching everything in your YouTube, which, by the way, if you have a YouTube, you should subscribe to ours. Do it. And anyway, every night, Jack, he does the same thing. He goes to the bar and he gets ripped. Yes. <laughs> and one night on his way to the pub, the devil appears. And he's like, bro, first of all, huge fan of your work. <laughs> and not to make this awkward, but like, I you should totally help me move this couch into my van because like my <laughs> arm is broken and like I can't really do it alone. It's pizza. kind of awkward. Yeah. <laughs> it, but Jack, right? Jack's like this trickster. He's like, bro, you can't bullshit a bullshitter. I know what's going on. <laughs> so he kind of like puts his arm around the devil and he's all, listen, bro, we could let you kidnap me in your rape van. Or what we could do is we could go to this pub where I know the bartender. And he'll totally hook us up with as many ice cold pints as we want. Wow. Who needs rape when you can have and pints? Satan. <laughs> <laughs> and Satan, Satan thinks to himself for a second. He's like, yeah, you know, it is really hot in hell. And a cold beer actually sounds really nice. I would love that. And Jack's like, yeah, dude, self-care, very, very important. <laughs> the devil should um, understand that. The devil should understand yeah. that. Self-care. Listen, take care of yourself. Yeah. You never know. Um, Because if you don't do it, who will? Go to the spa. Who will do it if you don't? Don't get a rape van. Exactly. In this case, don't get a rape van. In this case, it's 1600s Ireland pub. That's where uh, the devil decides to take self Imagine being there, dude. Oh, but it was so cool. It it probably smells great, I imagine. Well, I'm not going to get into that. But I was in a 16th century pub in York, and I was like, this is insane. This is so old. In the 16th century, yeah. like where you were time traveling? Yeah, I or went this back in recently? time. No, it was like in 2017. It was cool. Uh, I, what is it? Just like a mud building of some <laughs> sort that's like lasted forever? Like how do you, how do you, what do you make in the 16th century that lasts? A lot a of pub? things, dude. Like those like, uh, you know. The... No, I'm saying what do you make it out of? Oh, like, do you want me to go into this? Yeah, explain to us because I have no idea what a 16th century Irish pub looks like. So, so why don't you set the scene I would for imagine us. that it's like one of those houses you see that are like kind of Shakespearean, Tudor. With the, they're called wattle and daub houses, which is they use those big cross beams made of oak. They're super strong, old growth, mm-hmm. old growth oak, which is what they used. We don't use old growth trees anymore because not good, but it's excellent wood. They're old, they're old and we don't. They're so strong. They're so strong. They're like that's why some of these wooden buildings are still around. And they have like this weird, like they would combine like I think I think it's animal poo and like clay and sand, <laughs> and they would like guano. Yeah, yeah it was like the sticky stuff that would hold this like frame together and they've been using this forever and they, I think they still yeah, yeah. do but so yeah I just picture like a like a Shakespearean pub and that's pretty much what it is was it pretty tiny the one that you went I'm, I imagine yeah not that big, it, it right? was little it was like um it was really tall but it was like kind of little and it was really weird because you could like it was it was like off center like it was like sinking in on itself so the that's kind of the cool. floor was like tipped and part of the part of the beams were like bent it was crazy I don't remember the name of it, but it was really cool. And it was it's probably just called Pub. I wonder, were they still serving liquor? Yeah. Or it was just there as like a historical. No, no, you, they were, you, you could, could actually literally yeah. still go drink yeah. there. And people would. That's awesome. And I w- went and got like fish and chips at this like 600 year old pub. It was insane. That's awesome. Yeah. It was a cool experience. It was awesome. Where was it, you said? It's in York, but they're all over. There's multiple ones. Um, what was sure, this right, one right. called? I want to say it was like something with the word swan in it. Anyway, go on. So we're in a 16th century pub anyway, with so- the devil. Jack and the devil, they're walking along, they get to the bar, and they're drinking, and it's awesome, yes. right? Pint after pint, they just keep throwing them back, and they're getting shit-faced. <laughs> they're playing darts. <laughs> they're ordering, like, you know, buffalo wings and, you know, potato skins. <laughs> Satan gets the courage to get this girl's number at the end of the bar. It's like a perfect night. Perfect. Oh, Satan. Right? He's, they're, have, they're, they're really 
coming into themselves. Yeah. And at the end of the night, right as the bill comes, Satan's like, Jack, 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 listen, Jack. Yeah. You, what? you, you're a, you're a solid bro. <laughs> like you're solid, bro. Seriously. <laughs> and like, listen, I, I don't just tell anyone that. So if I say you're solid, that, that, that means something. Oh, but, but here, do they kiss? But, but here's the deal. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. I'm like, you know, like I'm, I'm Satan. I'm, I'm the devil. I know this. And your shit, bro, your, your shit is fire. And I got to bring you back with me to, to hell. You got to come with me. Oh, he got to, he got to, do you know how, how, he's just like, you got to come back. Do you know how excited Henry Kissinger is going to be? He's going to love this. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be so sick. The Kissinger lore (laughs) is that he was there before he was alive and he was sent. He was reincarnated. He was sent back to earth. And then, yeah, Reagan's down there. It's great. (laughs) Yeah. uh, Funny you said that. And Jack, but Jack, he knows what's up. He's not an idiot. He's a trickster himself. Right. And he's like, look, man, I look, I really dig your vibe. Too. He's letting him down gently. He's very yeah. nice about it, right? Because you can't, when someone's that drunk and aggressive, like you got to be <laughs> mindful. You can't just be like, get away from me. Careful. You got to like, you, you got to be careful. You got to be very, make eye contact, you know, put your hand on their shoulder, mm-hmm. just very calmly be like, I really dig your vibe too. And I would absolutely go down to hell with you and everything. But, you know, honestly, like I've been having a great time. I, I really have. Honestly, I, I'm not bullshitting you, but I did just meet you. Like it's a little bit soon. It's fast. Like, uh, and, 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 and honestly, how do I even really know that you're the devil? You know, I don't, I, I, I don't, as far as I know, like we just had drinks and we're hanging out and having a good time. You got that girl's number. There's nothing to me that indicates that you're Satan. He, he looks over and the and, girl's just a like turnip said, with a face carved into it. <laughs> <laughs> that girl over there. And Satan, he is hurt. Like, this is like daggers in his heart. He is so offended. And, you know, in all of his years of being the Prince of Darkness, no one has ever, ever doubted his powers. And he's like, excuse me? He hasn't been this hard did you broken say? since Margaret Thatcher dumped him. Exactly. <laughs> And Jack is like, bro, 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 get just like, 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 get it together. Stop being so emotional. Relax. <laughs> just, just think about it from my perspective. I can't go based on faith alone. That's, that's for the guy upstairs. <laughs> that's that guy. That guy's all about faith. I gotta see it. So I don't know. Look, just, just turn into like, I, I don't know. Just turn into a coin. If you can turn into a coin. <laughs> I will gladly come be a part of your three-way 60 nighting parties with Kissinger and Reagan yeah. <laughs> while he watches in the corner and jerks off. <laughs> he's going to cuck Satan? And... He's going to cuck hold Satan? <laughs> Wait, who's, who's the cuck in this situation? Is it Satan or is it Jack? So Satan and Kissinger and Jack are 60 nighting each oh, other while Reagan watches Reagan's in the corner the and cuck. jerks off. Yeah, absolutely. He's the cuck. Yeah, yeah. And, and Maggie yeah. Thatcher is like, she's moved on at this point. She's she's not even interested she's just, in this point. She's, she's just like boring. Boring. Her and uh, Oliver Cromwell are just distro- just going at it. Um, and Satan naturally he gets really excited thinking about all the possibility of all this yeah. happening. He's like, okay, fine, fine, fine. For you, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna turn into a coin. And true to his word, he transforms himself into a coin. Hold on, sorry. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> the logistics of a three way sixty nine. I can't. <laughs> like, how does that work? Does that, are we gonna? Just, it's like a human centipede that, oh, like the snake eating its own tail kind like of thing. Oro- That's all it is. Ouroboros. Ouroboros. <laughs> you know? Okay. Thanks. Yes. Thanks for explaining that because my brain grabbed onto that and did not let go. So, listen. Coin? You're like Satan. You're fixated on it, and you're like, I love this. Yeah. Yeah. And so Satan's like, listen, this is too good of an opportunity to let go. So he turns himself into a coin, like a, whatever, like a shilling or something, whatever they would have had at this, in the 1600s. Yeah, probably. And everyone at the bar is like, oh, my God, I'll be damned. What? Like a puff of smoke. and it, It's like a magician's yeah. trick. But not Jack. Jack, his drunk ass, takes this coin, the devil coin, <laughs> puts it in his pocket, then puts in like a mini silver crucifix. Oh. And like bada bing, bada boom, the devil's trapped. He imprisoned him. <laughs> No more kissing. He the devil. No more sweet, sweet Kissinger for you. Disgusting. <laughs> He's all, bye, Felicia, and just like leaves the bar and goes about his Did life. Did you just use a meme from like eight years ago? <laughs> it's from the movie Friday, okay? Oh. Anyway, I'm, I, yeah. I'm, I'm an elder millennial. I know these references. Mm. So basically, he puts them in his pocket and he traps them there. And the devil is like, dude, let me out. I can't be trapped in your pocket. This is so annoying. What are you doing? I thought we were friends. <laughs> And he whines and he whines and he complains so much that finally Jack is like, ugh, 
Okay, but only if you don't make me to go to hell for like another year. Oh. Okay, I got to see the next Avengers movie with Tony Stark as Doctor Doom. No, 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 no. That's, I got to wait That's for that. That's part of going to hell. <laughs> You've mistaken it. That's my hell. <laughs> Jack, Jack really wants to see it, and the devil under his breath is like, wow, an insufferable Marvel fan? How original. Oh. Interesting. And Jack's like, did you just say superhero movies aren't cinema? And Satan's like, no, 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 whatever, whatever. It's fine. We have a deal. Just let me out. I don't care. <laughs> I can't listen to this anymore. So Jack's chilling, you know, and a year, a year's a pretty long time. So he's like, I'll just get, I'm going to relax for a couple months, and then I'll get to my bucket list before I'm dragged to hell eventually. It's fine. I got plenty of time. And sure enough. Closes his eyes for like a second and suddenly a year has gone oh. by because that's the curse of adulthood. Yes. <laughs> I was just thinking about like, that this morning. I was like, it. I'm 35. And then I was like, mm-hmm. no, no, I'm almost 37. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wanted to vomit. So a year goes by and sure enough, the devil comes back and he's like, you know, he's pointing at his watch and he's like, time to go. Time to go. The judge time Judy, to go. The Judge Judy gif. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the Judge Judy meme. Exactly. And Jack, again, smart guy. Mm, yeah. Also drunk. And Jack's One just and like, dude, listen, I'm, I'll be real with <laughs> I'm you. I'm so hungover. I'm super hungover <laughs> right now. I'm so hungover. I stepped on your joke. <laughs> do you, he's like, do you think, do you think I could just eat like a, a like just, do you think I could just eat like an apple or something? So just, I need to sober up before we go. It, it's not going to be great. And the devil, he's got a soft spot for apples and he loves story callbacks. So he's like, okay, fine. I, I can get you an apple. Does he love apples? And he's I mean, you know, Adam and Eve. Oh, and the apple! The apple. And the I forgot all about that. Tree of knowledge. He all does that love apples, like horse. So he loves horse. the self-referential, yeah. and uh, he's like, "All right, all right, that's fine." He's like, and plus, he, you know, he's got respect for Jack. He's kind of low key, like a little bit afraid of him. <laughs> where he's just like, "I don't want to mess with this guy. He already like tricked me once." Yeah. And Jack's like, "Oh, listen, like, there's a tree right there. Uh, it looks pretty good, but like, straight up, I can't, I can't climb it, dude. I'm too drunk. <laughs> like, I'm too, I'm just." I'm going to throw up. I'm going to throw up. Can you just? And Satan's like, wow, fine. I guess I have to do everything around here. Yeah. And he climbs the tree to grab an apple. And as soon as he does, Jack magically sobers up and just carves this giant cross into the bottom of the tree. Yes, Jack. I love how he's so am- he's amoral, but he'll still just use the crucifix, like a crucifix or a cross. Or a- right. Yeah. Just use what he can. And the devil is like, bro, again, <laughs> I can't deal with crosses. How am I supposed to get down? <laughs> You know I can't deal with crosses. You know, you know I can't deal with this. I thought we were homies. What is going on? Did last year mean nothing to you? Ugh. Did it mean nothing? It didn't. And so Jack strikes another deal. This time for 10 years. Oh. He says, a decade. I don't want a year. I need a decade. And Satan, he's like, I cannot believe that I've been bested by this drunk blacksmith again. <laughs> and he agrees. And he pisses off back to hell to 69 Reagan and Kissinger. This time while... Roy Cohn watches. Oh, he's there. Of course. Of course. He's the cuck. Yep. Yep. Just, I and just Jack, picture Satan doing Jack's this like... and just sobbing. <laughs> just. Uh, <laughs> uh. Anyway. And Jack's like, ah, sucka. I got 10 more years of drinking ahead of me. <laughs> Joke's on you, whatever. And he's like, it's going to be awesome. Except his liver is like, yeah, actually, no, not quite. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kind of on my and deathbed. Soon... <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of over for us, Jack. And soon after, sure enough, Jack dies. No! What? Jack dies? <laughs> yeah. Jack dies. And he goes to the pearly gates. No, he goes and, to hell. And, you know, no, first he goes oh, to the pearly okay, gates. Okay. He goes there. And it's, what is it, St. Peter? He's yeah. there and he's like, look, uh, he's like looking at his thing. And he's like, let me see. Jack the blacksmith got shit faced all the time, never helped anybody out, twice deceived the devil himself. <laughs> uh, oh, respect. Uh, yeah, and Jack's like, yeah, buddy, reporting for duty. Say, what kind of loggers you guys got in heaven anyway? Yeah. <laughs> bye, bye, Captain. Yeah, and God's there, and he's just kind of like, he's like, no, denied. Like, we're not going to let this guy into heaven. <laughs> just go, go, go to hell. Bye. He also gives him the bye, Felicia. But mm. it's God. He's been around forever, so he makes the old references. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just and, like you. Yeah, exactly. And he sends him to hell, and then he gets to hell's gates. And he's just like, Satan. He- devil buddy Look what's it up is. it's me i'm here <laughs> you better uh open up a little spot in there for that me and that three-way 69 it's gonna be a four-way soon yeah so you know uh satan gets up and he whatever he tells himself off and he's just like what are you you died what are you doing here it hasn't even been the 10 years and he's like well you know they they didn't want me in heaven so we're gonna be homies after all and the devil 
he is just like that that god doesn't want you <laughs> he's like that's no fun you and me both buddy <laughs> you've taken all the fun out of it yeah he's just like i'm not taking god's sloppy seconds that's not interesting to me <laughs> he's like dude just eat shit get out of here <laughs> why am i so jack I love the devil <laughs> kind of loving the devil right now because we've all been bested by somebody so <clears throat> jack jack he has to go back to earth oh. but before he did the devil flung a single burning ember from the fiery pits to light his way through the eternal darkness Amazing. and jack took that ember and he put it he put it into a turnip lantern thus creating the legend of the oh, jack-o-lantern who roams the bogs and marshlands <laughs> using the devil's ember to light his way yes Bugs, bugs, bugs. Okay, here's the thing about that is that those those things called the will-o'-wisp. Will-o'-the-wisp? That's what I'm about to get into. Okay, go for it. Funny enough, yeah. Not to, I, won't, um, I won't say anything I can, else because I do know a lot about okay. this, this Irish mythology. I thought you might, yeah. so I, did, I didn't get into too much of this. But so aside from being an awesome story, there's a theory about why it took hold. Uh -huh. And that is there's a natural phenomenon, uh -huh. as you're about to say, that occurs in marshlands and bogs in Ireland's countryside called ignis fascis, uh -huh. I believe is the pronunciation, that produces flickering lights as gases from decomposing organic matter combust. Someday that'll be me. Also known as will o' the wisp. Will o' the wisp. It wisp, often yeah. seems like a floating flame that would move away from you as you walked closer to it. So if you're a person who's just walking around and you see this weird bluish dancing light and you try to like go see what it is and it looks like maybe it's somebody like holding a light, you could theoretically sink into fall into a sinkhole or a bog and drown. Which is not cool. I mean. So, I mean, it might be cool. That's true. Unless it's you. But if you're not trying to die, uh, the story of Jack-O-Lantern may have also served as an unintentional PSA, uh, oh. tricking people into not following the random flames popping up in the bog, lest they wish to be buried in the bog, which in your case is a feature, not a bug. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's wild. Okay, so he's turnip head Jack. And that would make sense if they're like, hey, kids, don't wander into the bog. The devil's nemesis yeah. is going to kill you and the drag you this down. This guy that like screwed over the devil twice. He, exactly. He, didn't, so, he got kicked out of heaven and hell. That's awesome. Dude, it's awesome as shit. I love him. Yeah. Um, also, good hang. Clearly knows how to like yeah. party at the bar. <laughs> Live fast, die young, but also lead a bunch of kids yeah. to their death. So modern science explains the light aspect as natural phenomenon such as uh, bioluminescence or... Oh chemiluminescence oh. caused by the oxida oxidation of phosphine, diphosphane, and methane produced by organic decay, much like your body when it's finally time oh. in the marsh it's, and in the body. Why did that like, um, why was that touching to me? What's wrong with me? Because that's your dream. <laughs> Nothing. A lot. Nothing is wrong with you. Oh, thanks. Uh, interestingly, since bogs and marshlands aren't exclusive to Ireland, uh -uh. these kinds of insane stories uh, stories show up in places like Mexico, which apparently like has to do with like witches, uh, ghost lights call in India oh, called yeah. uh, Chirbati. Uh, there's references in Japan with something called Hitodama, which are fireballs said to be the souls of the dead <laughs> that have separated from their bodies. Cool. Um, this, it sounds like you might've done some of this, but the will of the wisp shit is like its own 150 oh, yeah. million tabs. There's a lot to read about. It's really interesting. I have implemented um, the will of the wisp into my gra the graphic novel that I'm the myth. The, oh no yeah, shit. Yeah. The myths. I'm like modernizing a myth, a Welsh myth, an Irish myth into like an, a story. And that's part of it. There's like a whole aspect of it. Here I am thinking that I could give you a fun tidbit, but do you know? Uh, here's me Welsh splitting to you, but do you know, at least in the West, the f who first wrote about the Will of the Wisp? No. Uh, in 1340, apparently I do have now. Oh. I do have a one up on you. That's exciting. In 1340, poet uh, Dafid Ap Gwilym. Davith do you know this man? Davith Ap Gwilym. Davith Ap Gwilym described the blue flame phenomenon from the bogs and named them Canowil Corf. Okay, hold on. Do you know what this is? No, I don't know what this is. I'm okay, trying good. to find. I did hold on, I, d I wanted to find the. Oh yeah, so this is Canwish Corf. Canwish Corf. Canwish Corf. Yeah. Canwish yeah, Corf. There you go. Which means? Do you know what it means? Uh, Corf mean Corf means something like the body, right? It's like corpse. That's right. Corf, corf is corpse, but Can is song. Canwish. I don't know what Canwish means. Corpse candles. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So See, everything is candles. good. I love everything you're saying. <laughs> oh yeah, Conwish is 
Can can wish corp. <laughs> can wish corp. So corpse candles, something to do with like the longer you, it's like if you see them, the taller they are, the longer you have to live. If they're shorter, you have less cool. left to live. I don't know. I I was gonna read about it, but I was like, that's cl- I'm throwing you some red meat. I figured I'd throw that to you mm-hmm. and be like, you can probably do a deep dive into oh, that yeah. or something that you'd really want to do. Thank you. Um, before I forget. Ooh. Um, do you want to see the funniest image ever? Yes, I do. Uh, which is, <laughs> these are some, here's one, here's one of the turnip lanterns from Ireland, which is objectively the funniest thing I've ever seen. Let's we'll see. This is the most unhinged looking. <laughs> <laughs> are you kidding? <laughs> look, at, look at its little teeth. It's got like. It's, it looks insane. Baby teeth in there. It, oh, what? Why is his mouth pink? Okay, go to the go YouTube right now, everybody. You yeah. need to see this horrific little thing. It looks like a newborn baby. It looks baby like something head. from a Quay, yeah, or something from a Quay Brothers like stop motion movie of some sort. It's truly horrific. It's really gross. I did't know turnips looked like that. Neither did I. It's it looks like it's like smelling um, something really horrible and like. Uh, wow. Uh, and then of course here's some of the phenomenon. Anyway, there's a bunch of oh, yeah. crazy stuff. Um, this is a piece by uh, what's his name Dore Ooh. of the corpse, the corpse candles. Candle stuff. I'm, um, how did I not know this aspect of Welsh mythology? I'm disgusted with myself. It's fine. That's why we have a show where I could uh, teach you some Listen stuff. Whoa! Listen to about this. The the Canwish Canwish Corf is a, a relative of Gurak Arhibin, which is the Hag of the Mist. The Hag of the Mist, which is an even more terrifying Welsh version of the Irish Banshee. It takes the oh. Okay, well, this is racist. Ready for this? The Gurak Ribbon yeah. takes the form of a repulsive old hag with piercing black eyes and a long flowing cape, and it is said to only appear to those of true Welsh pedigree. Mm. She's got big leathery right. wings. Yeah, she's like, oh, you got too much English in you. Actually, that's not, that's kind of cool. So, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> it's not really racist. Anyway, it's ze- yeah. more like xenophobic hag. Xenophobic, yeah. Anyway. Uh, anyway, so this this is a whole thing. Uh, there's a billion ghost stories being told and whatnot. And then, as I mentioned earlier, the aforementioned potato famine of 1845 happens. Yeah. yeah. And suddenly, millions and millions of Irish people are forced to emigrate Uh to the United States. And like all immigrants, they bring with them stories, traditions, whatnot. And when Halloween rolls around, they're like, hmm, this America place doesn't seem to have a whole lot of turnips and beets, but (gasps) they do put pumpkin in everything. And then the other Irish guy is like, Dude, I went to Trader Joe's and it was like everything from crackers to cream cheese to pizza <laughs> filled filled with pumpkins. Pumpkin spice pizza. And it's borderline getting out of hand. Yeah. It and the is. other guy's like, you can't base your entire personality around pumpkins. You need to develop right. an actual personality. You people are insane. But hey, it is pretty much European culture to, well, no, it's not. Never mind it because that's from Native Americans, right? They had t- pumpkins and, and squash, right? Yeah, I think oh, that was their whoa. whole deal. So. Anyway, uh, the Irish were just like, there's way more pumpkins. There are turnips. Also, pumpkins are much better for carving, yeah. and they're much bigger, and like they can hold the fire, and it's great. And so they just swapped them out that's and it. kept the tradition going. And people were like, hey, that's kind of cool. And now we're like the jack-o'-lantern cap- capital of the world. So, you know, salute I was gonna say, to our Irish God brothers and sisters for bringing us Irish. such a wonderful tradition. I, yeah. It's interesting you say that because now that you say that, um, the whole like making a deal with the devil is a very Irish thing, but it's also a very Southern thing. And I think it's because mm-hmm. the Irish, the Scotch Irish and the Irish settled the South. Like That makes sense. And that's why bluegrass sounds like it does because it sounds kind of like Celtic music a little bit, but with like a twang. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, there's always those stories of like, do you want to be good at guitar? Then you got to make a deal with the devil and then like. Yeah. Yeah, smart. The devil. It's very Irish. That's cool, dude. Oh. Yeah. You just yeah. gave me so many fun little like like I, I've just like little, little tidbitty things. Yeah. Blasts. Blasts. <laughs> Thank yes. you. Anyway, so that that's sort of like the or I mean, there's a bunch. There's so there's actually quite a lot to read about this, uh, but I, I tried to just make it as you know concise as I could to be like there's a lot here to you. Like you said, there's little seeds of stuff yeah. that you can read about. But like kind of with corp, I'm very um, excited about the corpse candles. Corpse candle is like I think we should produce corpse candles. Yeah. I think we should just make bodies and put them in. Like you could take your own three D <gasps> scan of your body oh and turn gosh. it into a corpse that was in the bog, and then have a candle come out of it. I don't know. That's what I want. I think there's tremendous growth opportunity here for that. Also, just like saying "can can um, wish corp. it's really pretty. Can wish corp. It sounds like that uh, seems like a cool band name. Can oh, 
One once again. There is a huge Welsh metal scene. Oh my- yes, there's your the shirt. Salute. I can just picture you like being so tired and like I do need to go to bed, but I will not go to bed until I draw this pumpkin exactly how I want it. Hundred percent. And then hundred percent. My wife have my wife cricket it onto a shirt that I bought at Joanne's, all within the span of like five hours. Right. Yep. Yeah. Not even like much less than that. Yeah. Thank you for this tab. This is just sure so delightful. It's a lot of fun. It was interesting to read about it. Um, and I didn't. I just love that Jack story. I Me was too. Like, this is unhinged and so and I Irish. Absolutely love Jack O'Lantern. <laughs> right. I would love to. I'm calling yeah. this my Jack O'Lantern shirt too. Basically, I've decided that that was my my shout out to Jack O'Lantern, the original. Yes, the original blacksmith. Hated by the devil, and I feel like that's the kind of thing you put on the back of like a biography. Yeah. Like if Jack O'Lantern wrote a biography, he'd have like a quote from God hating him and a quote yes. from the devil hating him. Yes. And, and then he'd be like, I want to read this guy's story. And the only place he belongs is the bogs of Ireland. Okay. Jack o' lanterns are the best. Wow, thank you. I gotta come down. I gotta come down from that for a minute. Oh yeah, look, did you see the lights? I tried to put like fun Halloween lights and then I completely forgot to tell you about them. What is the shirt that you're wearing? Oh. You should just <laughs> What? What? You just hit yourself in the face with the light. Yeah. Wish cor- okay, look. That's cool. Look, I'm a corpse candle. This says in dog years, I'm dead. <laughs> and it's a gravestone. Very Should nice. I wear these for the mine? A, yeah. a scarf made of. I okay. you, look. You you talked about Welsh mythology. I'm 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 going insane. Oh, I can't. <laughs> like this is bad. You're like I don't even want to do my own. Yeah, tab. no, I'm serious. I'm like I need to read about the hag and the corpse candles <laughs> and how they caused a Welsh mining disaster. That's what I just found. Whoa. Yeah. Okay. I mean, to be continued. Those are one in a million. I mean, those are like, what is it called? Di- something with a dime, dime a dozen. Dime a dozen. Welsh mining disasters are a dime a dozen. Speaking of the English coming in and wrecking a whole culture, yeah. Okay, I gotta get off. I gotta get off this horse. <laughs> Why is it a horse? Gotta get off this horse and get on Why not? my. It's a headless horse. Ooh, ooh, or a headless horse. Ooh. Just a st- just like a torso <laughs> with legs and a stump. Yeah, how come no one ever made a headless yeah. horse? That's an Imagine interesting Imagine that idea. thing just running around and hitting into stuff, tripping, yeah. just biffing it, falling Throwing all human over. heads at people. Yeah, with its... Actually, no, it would throw it would throw a horse head because he's throwing a human head. How would it throw it? It doesn't have opposable thumbs. Hmm. I don't know, it kicks it. Oh, you're right. He just kicks his own head around like a soccer ball. Why That's not? my legend I'm going to do. Okay. Okay, Hannah, so what do you got for your tab? Well, I almost went weird and creepy and British, okay? Like I usually do. Uh, yeah. But... Half my open tabs are pretty much that already, and I've already talked at length about weird, cra- creepy British stuff. I decided I'm going to go not predictable and okay. do a little bit of something more wholesome that's very much Interesting. Uh, not spooky, but is very, very important to Halloween. So the open tab that spurred all of this, right, is actually a YouTube video, and it's an upload of a short documentary that's titled, We Need a Blockbuster, Charlie Brown. The making of the Great Pumpkin. Did you ever watch the Great Pumpkin? The Charlie Brown yeah. special. Yeah, of course. Okay, just making sure you didn't. So, what do I look like? A monster? I know. I, but look, I don't know. So, this is all about how that docu- how that special came to be, and love it. The impact it made, and just Charles Schultz in general. He's great. Already love yeah. it. Yeah. So, as the audience knows, if they've watched the Patreon AMA. We both deeply appreciate and love Charles Schultz and Peanuts and very influential yep. to both of us as cartoonists. And for good reason, Charles, he actually liked to be called Sparky. Sparky, that's yeah, right. Didn't, no one, he never wanted anyone to call him Charles or Charlie. So Sparky Schultz was an American cartoonist, now considered one of the most influential cartoonists on earth that has ever lived, uh, influenced Almost everything you see now. Um, Literally everybody. Yeah, yeah, like Watterson and Matt Groening and Jim Davis all cite him as like, anyway. And, and the guy. he created these characters that are just so, I mean, first of all, you can tell that they're like absolute mirrors of himself. He kind of split his own mm-hmm. parts of his personality into these this gang of kids. Yeah. And funnily enough, he named all these kids after people he knew. Did you know that? Yeah. UDK, I'm pretty sure you know a lot of this, right? Do you already know all of this? I, I, I don't know. Uh, I, I don't know what you're going to. I don't know the length to which you're going to talk about it, but I told you there's that Michaelis book that I read. Yeah. Uh, that's the biography of Charles Schultz, which was apparently a bit controversial amongst the biographical writer community. Why? Uh, it wasn't because it was like he took a lot of liberties being like, this comic is a reference to this person uh... in his life and like this event that happened. 
not controversial like in like a oh it was like wrong it was just very like insider biography writers kind of thing yeah. but uh that biography is uh something that i read and uh, i had not really done comics for a long time like since i was a kid and part of the spark out of all the different there was a lot of different factors that led me going back into it right uh, as an adult but one of those was reading that book and being like oh i can it really was inspiring to me in terms of like how he looked at his life and how he incorporated his life into the strip oh, that's and how much really of cool. it is like autobiographical. And I was like, Oh, I, I got, I, it made me like look at it in like a sort of, now you can sort of see the matrix code thing yeah. where I yeah. was like, Oh, I can do this. So yep. that, that was a really, really important book for me to have read at the time that I read it. I highly recommend it to everybody. Oh, it's, I'm and it's not it. like a, it's not an audiobook thing. Like you have to see the strip that he's right, referencing. Right. Like it's visual. It's not like a million strips in it or anything, but it's, it's like it, you don't get the context of just having somebody else read it. Like you have to look at it. It's thick too, but it's really, really good. I can't, I can't stress enough how important, how great that book is, and it's deeply sad. Yeah. <laughs> but which is why I love he's about it. He's really sad. Which I, I was like mm-hmm. expecting him to have this horrific childhood, but he didn't. He's just sad, and uh, I like that. You know what I mean? No, he's sad. The, the, the whole thing with Charlie Brown, which was the whole thing that was with Schultz, which was so fascinating about it, is that like he was a gifted kid yes. and he grew up in a culture <laughs> and in a place of like Norwegian immigrants who were like, you do not do this. <laughs> have to don't be gifted and draw attention to right. yourself. We're just going to pretend like you're not gifted. Blend and so in. he internalized that and was like, I guess I'm just an insane weirdo. That's that's fundamentally Charlie Brown's thing. That's why, which is I what think makes I it like, the it. source of all those comedies. Because that yeah. is a g- sorry, I just hijacked this. No, I figured you might. I was excited to yeah. talk about this because I'm like, I know he's gonna love this. So, and also, you have a lot to to tell to say too. Like, I, I mean, it's yeah, a yeah. very I have a lot to talk about. Peanuts is a very important thing to me. I mean, it's funny because as I've been doing this entire tab, I I've gotten really like self reflective about comic art and cartoonist cartooning and kind of like thinking like why was like i've been doing this since i was was little like sequential art has always kind of been my medium and yeah there's a quote he says i think in in an interview he does with charlie kelly no not kelly (laughs) charlie kelly it's like so tell me about uh all the different things you're trying Uh, uh, denim chicken anyway um charlie (laughs) charlie rose charlie rose right Uh, he's sitting across the table and he's like Charles Schultz. Yes. You are a, a, cartoonist. a cartoonist. You are. You So you've seen the. Uh, what is it? <laughs> oh, yeah. I just watched. I remember before he got. Uh, before it turned out he was told he's shit. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, well. And, oh, gross old weirdo. Uh, Charlie Rose, not like, Schultz. He slams his hand on the table. Yeah. And he's just all, so condescending. Uh, Americana. Yeah. And then Charles. <laughs> what does it all mean? Schultz was like. With his giant head. People don't think we're artists and we don't, we don't belong in museums. And I was like. <laughs> Thank you. Because yeah. so often, like, it, I mean, shout out. Some of my teachers, some of my professors were great. But, like, a lot of them, like, looking back on it, really did not foster my love for sequential art. I spent all my college years trying to suppress it, trying to to fit into a mold. And the second I got out of college, I immediately went back to cartoons. Like, it's just, yeah. it's just how, it, how it happened. And anyway, yeah. I just got all very, very, like, sentimental a little bit or, like, like this dude was the real deal. Just you know, he just did it. He really was. He just yeah. did it because he couldn't not do it. And I really relate to that. That's that's the key. Yeah, it's like he couldn't not yes. do it. Like if he wasn't famous and doing it for the paper, he would still be doing this. And mm-hmm. that's dude, same, same. <laughs> like I remember being backstage thinking I wanted to be an actress, and I would be like, I can't wait to get off stage, and so I can just sit down and draw until I have to get back on stage. Yeah. And that's when I was yeah. like, I don't even want to be here. I just want to be drawing. And I would draw like cartoons. I remember the very first comic I ever did for anything was the school newspaper. And it, my, my my friend was the editor and he was like, can you draw something about Dick Cheney? And I was like, yeah. So I drew Dick Cheney as Gollum. And uh, that's awesome. Yeah, it was pretty good. It's all right. But that like gave me like a I was like, oh, Yes, and I was in a very conservative state, and nobody liked it. Nobody liked that. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you a funny story real quick about a comic that I drew for the school paper. Okay, I think. Um, okay, yeah. That th- have I told you this I, before? I, have I, I, I talked about it? I don't Tur- remember. Do it anyway. I might have told. I don't remember if I said this on like a Patreon thing or something. But just in case, I'll I'll tell you the story because it's funny. 
which is uh, I was also an illustrator in the school paper and I also had to do comics. I had to do like whatever uh, political cartoons yeah. and stuff like that. And I and there was a gag that was a, something about like a hall pass. I don't remember what the deal was with the hall pass, but <clears throat> that was part of the joke. And it was like it was a POV shot. So it was somebody's hand holding uh, a hall pass and there was a whole gag and uh, it got printed and it like circulated throughout the, the school. No one paid attention to the gag. Everybody asked me why the hand had so much hair on it. <laughs> And, it, and I was like, that was, I just drew my own yeah. hand and people were like, that's weird. And I'm like, that to me is like, that's like super emblematic of like, I did not grow up with representation because no, yeah. everyone got fixated on the hand like, on the hair. Why is there so much hand, hair on this hand? Whoa. Yeah. And I was like, you didn't see the joke? And you're like, anyway, you got, you got just, quietly I, othered by everybody. Yeah. By everyone. everyone. People were like, I didn't even realize the gag. Like, All I could focus just on looks was like the hair. My hand. I was like, yeah. <laughs> Anyway, I always thought that that was a funny That's story really about how funny. insane it was. I grew up growing up, and very uh, a very good way to start uh, an autobiography. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I have some good stories that I can tell. You should tell them sometime in a book. I will one day. Anyway, continue. So Schultz, so we love Schultz. Schultz I and I, forgive me if I get all like I wax all like oh art, but this is I'm this means a lot to me. Turns out he means a lot. It means to a me. lot to me. Uh, yeah, and I love all the quotes he says about like. He, I would just be doing this anyway, or like, oh, I don't know, I, you know, I'm sad. <laughs> so it's Charlie Brown, <laughs> basically, yeah. And uh, so he grew up an only child, which, come on, you gotta have something to do when you're alone. Yeah. Uh, and he was nicknamed Sparky by his uncle because it was he was nicknamed Sparky because his uncle named him after a horse named Spark Plug from a different mm-hmm. comic book. So he was named after a cartoon. <laughs> Interesting. So. A uh, funny thing I read on his Wikipedia, though, is straight out of, like, Hannah Hillam handbook right here. Is he, Yeah. He got it in his head that he was going to send a drawing into Ripley's Believe It or Not, which at the <laughs> at the time, this is, I was constantly like, where can I send things into? Who's next? Like, yeah. Uh, and my mom was great. She's like, yeah, sure. <laughs> let's, let's do it. Send this to Reading Rainbow. Uh, it, <laughs> Disney Adventures was mine. That oh, was where really? I was like, my dream was to get published in Disney Adventures. Never happened. Oh, it's tragic. Yeah, no, I never saw I used that. Used to love Disney Adventures. I don't even know what that is. Oh, it was the best. It was like a bunch of Disney comics and like random stuff. It was like a magazine for kids. Oh, so I loved okay. It. Uh, Relic of the nineties. It was great. I so he, he was like, I need to send this thing into Ripley's Believe It or Not, which was a comic strip at the time. So yeah, there was multiple things that Ripley did, and one of them was a comic strip. And so he drew this picture. I'm sure you've seen it of a dog. He drew his dog Spike. Yeah which is also the name he gives Snoopy's weird uh, country cousin or whatever. Mm -hmm. Uh, So his dog Spike, and he wrote a caption that says, a hunting dog that eats pins, tacks, and razor blades, owned by C.F. Schultz, drawn by Sparky. And so he just wanted to be like, check out that. My dog eats all this insane stuff because now we all know it's pica and animals will eat anything if they have this thing called pica. So he sends this amazing... Have you seen this comic? I'm going to send it to you if you haven't. Yeah, send it to me. I don't know if I have. This is the very first published... Anyway, it gets published in Ripley's Believe It or Not. And you could already see his signature like... Uh, oh, yeah. This does look familiar. Yes. Handwriting yes. and... Yeah. and um, yep. He... Uh, anyway, I can't talk too much about Charles Schultz because that's an entire like five-hour tab documentary. Yeah. But his life got a little harder. He went to World War II. His mom died the same time mm. he went to World War II. Uh, yeah. she, and it was really sad. He, he, uh, it affected him deeply. He was notoriously deeply sad, uh, and self-deprecating as you can probably see in his Very work. So. so there's this awesome interview yeah. with Charlie Rose I talked about. Um, and he says about cartooning quote, I suppose there's a melancholy feeling in a lot of cartoonists because cartooning like all other humor comes from the bad things that happen. So, uh, I'll just let that sit for us. Uh, his daughter. Yeah. Amy described him in one word, obsessed, and he agreed. And I was like, I feel sane. Speaking of bad things happening to him, though. So 1966 rolls around, right? I almost said The Muppets Christmas Carol. That doesn't make any sense. The Muppets Christmas Carol, 1966. (laughs) It comes out even though the Muppets hadn't technically become a cultural phenomenon yet. No, it's uh, his entire studio burned down in 1966. Right. And his dad died at the same time, the the, the same mm-hmm. like year. Um, Not in the fire. No, but yes. no, no. But so he was like, "Oh, cool, stuff's horrible," uh, but I got to do this Christmas special, 
And so he makes Charlie Brown Christmas special, huge hit. He makes Charlie Brown All-Stars, big hit. Not as big of a hit, but the network comes to him in 1966 and they're like, hey, dude, we need another holiday special. And it has to be really good, like better than the Christmas special. <laughs> and he was like, how, what, how? I can't do better. What? That already was really good. What do you want from me? And they're like, and if not, then I don't think we can do any more specials with you. And, you know, that would piss me off. Yeah, right. I'm sure. I was like, yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh, no, they're just jerking exactly. his chain. Exactly. Just like the devil did. He's like a, he's a behemoth at this chain. point. Like, yeah, he, this guy is like a mark, not marketing, uh, merchandising juggernaut. Yeah. Like, I don't, I think any studio would have kissed his ass and let him do whatever he They were just he doing like, like some just dumb studio bullshit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, I don't know. We might ooh. not be able to make a special. And he's like you know rolling in money. <laughs> he's like, yeah. Oh, no problem. Uh, so yeah. the kind of like the, the team that consisted of like that made these specials was Bill Melendez. The animator and director yep. and um awesome mustache awesome epic mustache and then uh mendelson i didn't write his first name do you know his first name bill melendez and someone mendelson and uh uh lee lee men lee mendelson lee men lee mendelson and bill melendez. yeah it's but they both sound yeah. something about the rhythm of those two names Some sound the same similar and Vince Guaraldi, of course. Oh, yeah, I'll other. get there. So, Although Vince Guaraldi is not like, well, yeah, go ahead. They sorry. brought him in later. So I'm getting ahead of myself. They sit down and Bill Melendez is like, I was worried. Good golly, who's interested in this kind of nonsense? Which just love him. Love Bill. <laughs> like another, you know, TV show uh, who's interested in this. So they sit down and uh, Lee says, we all met and just stared at each other. And just tried to figure out what we were going to do for a holiday special. Like, first of all, which holiday? And they settled on Halloween because Charles Schultz has a ton of ho- uh, Halloween themed strips that he'd already been in, in, in syndication. Yeah. One of them being the lore of the giant, the, the, the great pumpkin, which mm-hmm. he has this idea. He's like, I know we're going to do the great pumpkin. And Charles got the like artist crazies when he was like, yes, that's what yeah. we're doing. And, you know, stood up. Oh, and it was sort of like his commentary on Santa Claus. And like how dumb it is, and Commercialism also and on that faith stuff, yeah. and how your own faith is perceived by others, and um, which was weirdly also really important to him because he was, I didn't know he was religious, but he was. He was very religious, yeah. So, I watched this movie last night because, of course, I have to watch it. The documentary, or you watch the actual? I watched the special, movie. So they get to work on okay. this, and they bring Vince Guaraldi in, and. He wrote the other one for the Christmas special, and then he also a cool mustache. Oh, oh, he's a cool looking dude. <laughs> San Francisco based. Really, I didn't know that. Yeah, he was from the city. So they would bring the storyboard to him, and he would look over it and immediately start like noodling around on the piano as he read the storyboard to get the vibe. Which I didn't know. That's really yeah. cool. You probably know all of this. I'm freaking out. Do you know all of this? I don't know every single detail, okay. and I love hearing it. It's like I've watched a TV show that I've. Like, you know, watch before and I get equally as excited because oh, okay. I like to see I keep it like collapsing in on myself. And the new one of the new songs in this one was called, was called The Great Pumpkin Waltz. And you can hear it when Linus mm-hmm. is in the pumpkin patch. And he, ding, yep. Ding, oh, with the yeah. little flute. Doodly, 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 yep. Doodly, 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 doodly. <laughs> and it was the same like jazz as usual. But this time he brought in a jazz flute because he wanted it to sound creepy. And I read the words jazz flute and I immediately, <laughs> n- Vietnam flashbacks for me. Uh, being in jazz band in high school and them finding out I could play the flute and my teacher Whoa. being like, we need jazz flute for this. And I was just like, please, no, don't make me don't do make it. me play the jazz flute. <clears throat> and so I had to play jazz flute for a concert. And I, I remember being up there and everyone watching me and I'm like, I can't do this. I can barely play <laughs> jazz saxophone. Anyway, so shout out to jazz flautists. You guys jazz flout. And so Vince Guaraldi, you know, came in and did all that and it's amazing. He kept some of the original songs from like the, what is it? Linus and Lucy, that classic. Yeah, yeah, the themes that yeah. they, yeah. Kept that. And this this amazing creation came out of all of this. They kind of weaved together all these different comic strips that had the Great Pumpkin in it and formed this story. And so I'm just going to go through it a little bit because, first of all, I thought this, I thought this was way more organized than it is. Flew it too close to the sun. <laughs> so I went and watched it and I haven't watched it in years and- I totally yeah. forgot how beautiful that intro is where it's just it's just the Linus and Lucy song and they're just walking to get a pumpkin yeah. and it's silent yep. and the fr- Lucy brings it back and she gets a knife and just starts stabbing the pumpkin and the first <laughs> the first line of the whole movie or the whole show is Linus saying like, you didn't tell me you were going to kill it I let la- oh <laughs> dude I laughed so hard it's so funny 
It's so good. This this whole special is just line after line solid. Hundred percent. Lucy, an icon too. Oh, Lucy, <laughs> she reminds me of my daughter. Oh, really? Yep. So. The whole plot of it is that Linus is at this deep belief that the great pumpkin, who he confuses with Santa Claus, is talk, talks about how it's going to give all the good children who wait for him gifts. And they sing pumpkin carols and pretty much just a weird <laughs> combo of, of Santa Claus or, and this pumpkin. And he, he is like writing letters to pumpkin, the great pumpkin, and mailing them off. And, great pump- right, right. and all the other kids are like, stop embarrassing us. That word is used so often. is like, you're embarrassing us. <laughs> And he's just sitting there like so relatable. Dear Great Pumpkin and his sister's like, You are yeah. so stupid. <laughs> like the amount of times they use stupid and dumb. <laughs> I was watching Kids don't give a shit. Go. <laughs> and Linus here's the thing, Linus is like, No, I'll never stop believing. Good. And one of the scenes, so I didn't realize this was the first time the football kick. You know the one where Lucy holds the football and, and yeah, yeah. tricks out Charlie every time. This is the first time they animated it. So they Oh, was it? Yeah. So at, I don't think I knew that. At first, the network was like, it seems like you guys are just cobbling together different little stories. How is this going to work? And of course, yeah. they pull it off great because you just put the background as like fall and then they're just playing football yeah. near Halloween. Easy. And it's just like a tw- two minute scene. But it, it, I forgot how evil and mean and wonderful Lucy is because she makes him. She's like, I signed a document saying that I won't pull it out of your out from under you this time. And Charlie's like, OK, and then she does. And she's like, I didn't notarize it. <laughs> and Charlie so just good. takes it, dude. Of course. So relatable. Because he's like, well, I'm the idiot. I should have known about notarization. Notarization. Meanwhile, these same bullies, aka his friends, are all getting their costumes ready. This is one of my favorite parts where they like cut holes in the the sheets to wear as like ghosts. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Charlie uh-huh. Charlie Brown somehow cuts like way too many holes in his sheet, and of course he gets absolutely roasted for it. Everyone's like, "You yeah. idiot! <laughs> you don't even know how to cut a sheet." <laughs> and I just like I just know that it, that is the the voice in Charles Schultz's head. Is all those other kids talking to Charlie Brown is the voice in his head telling him he sucks. And I yep. deeply relate to yep. that. I love it. Yeah. Even a holiday yep. special can't, you can't have it like without all the sad. I'm getting off topic, kind of. Um, what are you talking about? This is awesome. So then, I love then it. Then Snoopy, of course, another little like piece that the network was like, why are you putting this in? And it's the part where Snoopy pretends he's a World War I flying ace. Right. Snoopy becomes the Red Baron. Yeah, so they all get their costumes ready, and Snoopy comes walking in with like a Red Baron, like with the costume with like the 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 goggles and the cape, the goggles, yeah, yeah. and and uh, the jacket, and and this is the best part is Snoopy's just there in the background as he usually is, just kind of doing his thing, and these kids are just yeah. wrecking each other, just like, oh, Charlie Brown, you're such an idiot. Oh, look at that idiot dummy. And Lucy's like, my brother sucks. He believes in this stupid pumpkin. And then Snoopy's just like, look at me. And he like gets on top of his little house and he starts to, oh. yep. Oh. And then he starts to pretend to like have a an air battle with Germans, <laughs> like full on fake, just in his imagination. So that's what Snoopy's doing. Again, I said the network was like, what are you doing? This has nothing to do with Halloween. But the way he wove it in to this, masterful. Yeah, because he. It was like a parallel story. And a lot of this, the making of this, they were just kind of like, okay, do you think this is even going to work? Like, okay, we're going to, uh, okay, let's just keep doing it. <laughs> let's hope for a blockbuster. And the studio or the network the whole time is like, is it good? Is it going to be good? Is it good? Can you do this better than the Christmas one? And um, Man, I'm so glad that executives get paid a lot of money to just be like, is it good? Can you make it, it better? It needs to be good. Wow, you should make hundreds of thousands of dollars. What would we do without what you? What would we do without idiot? you? Just a bunch of nagging, oh my nagging God. teachers. Yeah. That's what it feels like. Ugh. Like, you done with your homework yet? Can yeah. I see it? Mm, line work looks weird. Huh. Yeah. Anyway, I'm mad. Glad that you weighed in. Thanks. Thanks. You hired me to do my job. Yeah, exactly. Yelling. Eat shit. Eat. Eat shit. Eat pumpkin. Uh, so, this whole like Red Baron thing was like Charles Schultz's like little like. Ooh, I, I gotta fit this in somehow, and so yeah. all these kids are like trick or treating, and and <laughs> Snoopy's like shooting down German, <laughs> fake German planes, and uh, crashing into France, and trudging through fields, and like going into the trenches, doing a whole thing. He's like in the trenches of World War One, 
crashes in France. And while while the kids are all just trick or treating, that this is all happening, Snoopy's just larping all over the place as like a, a World War One pilot. Uh, and while they trick or treat, they go to the door. Is of course Lucy's like, <laughs> so Linus doesn't come because he's l- sitting in what the pumpkin patch right. waiting for this mythical pumpkin. And Lucy's. <laughs> Lucy goes to the door of one of the houses and she's like, can I get an extra piece of candy for my stupid brother? <laughs> Which is just like the most sibling thing ever. It's like, I care about my brother and he's 100%. a big dumb idiot. I can't believe I'm doing this, but can you give me some candy for him? I have to. And yeah, my mom says I have exactly. to. Exactly. And they all get candy, except for Charlie Brown, who gets a bag of rocks. It's Charlie Brown. Should have gotten it notarized. <laughs> I just forgot that he only got rocks, which means like... The kids are, he got shat on by the kids and their parents. The adults in the town are like, oh yeah, this kid, this kid gets a rock. And not one, but three. And did they talk to each other? Did they all plan on giving Charlie Brown rocks? Or did they all have a rock near the door to give to Charlie Brown because they just knew he was coming for Halloween? And that's what he deserved. They were just like, yeah, listen, this kid sucks. See that kid we out there? We need to make sure that he's dis- depressed as possible. He's, he's not sad enough. So they get to the party. They were all going to a Halloween party. And there's the classic yeah. peanuts dancing, you know. Which is like the same four kids. Same four kids, like again. doing a little thing. Um, <clears throat> oh, I was going to say, <clears throat> the reason Charlie Brown just rolls over and takes it is because he understands the futility of life. That is life. And people who don't understand that are going to be disappointed yeah. over and over and over again. The sooner you accept disappointment, the sooner you yep. can live a life of meaning. Freedom, honestly. I'm free Freedom, of being let down because I'm just like, well, whatever. That's true. I don't Everything's know. terrible. And if you start yeah. at the base of everything being terrible, you can only go up. And I don't think that's wrong. I used to think like, oh, I should be more optimistic. It's like, absolutely not. Anyway. So they go to the party and there's the peanuts dancing. All the like, do, 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 do. And then Snoopy just finished crossing some trenches and he like sneaks into the village and he comes and joins the party. And Schroeder plays him yeah. some songs, and this is the part where Snoopy starts to, like, cry because the songs are sad, and he just fought in battle. Yeah. And he cries a, he cries a bunch, <laughs> which I feel like no one talks about enough. It's like, this Halloween special, Snoopy just went to war, and now he's crying over a piano playing, like, World War I songs. Clearly, yeah. I love that. And all the kids are, like, dancing, and I'm like, if that isn't PTSD right there, I don't know what is. <sighs> also, perfect encapsulation of people who come back from war and everyone's just like, just whatever, eat shit. Yeah. We're just going to dance. And they're like, I killed a man. I killed many men. Yeah. And they're, they're again, Charlie Brown gets shat on at the party because everyone's like, can we use you as a model? And they just draw a pumpkin's face on his head as like a piece of, they use him as scrap paper. <laughs> anyway, uh, so the whole time Linus is just out there in the pumpkin patch being like, I know there's a there's a pumpkin man or whatever. What is it? The great pumpkin Endures more trash talk. His friends come back and they're like, you are so dumb. And he's just still out there alone. And his friends are like, you're an idiot. And Sally abandons him and his sister abandons him. And he just lays down and <laughs> curls up <laughs> alone in the pumpkin patch. Uh, and ha- after having like this huge, massive crisis of faith, because he accidentally says if he comes instead of when he comes. And he's worried oh, no. that the pumpkin isn't going <gasps> to give him anything because he didn't believe hard enough, which... Religion. Or, ladies and gentlemen, that's called an anxiety disorder in a child. uh, (laughs) Undiagnosed OCD. Linus waits and the pumpkin never comes, which, again, very important, I think, for kids to see. Yes. And Lucy comes and gets him and angrily, like, puts him in his bed, you know, cares about him. And I I watched this as an adult. And what I got from it was way different, obviously. It was... I just saw inside of Charles Schultz's mind of his his battle with faith and depression and the voices, you know, the ba- the, yeah. the self-deprecation yeah. and, and the way he saw himself and the way he, even though like Charlie Brown seems like a decent kid, he still gets shat on by everybody. Yep. I don't know. I Whatever it is, it's just like a weird, I don't even think he meant to do it. I never mean to do this. I just draw and then later I'm like, uh-oh. Oh, I don't think he meant to do any of these things. Yeah, I think that's. Because in those interviews, he's no, no, like, no. oh, well, you know, I just, you know, just draw. And it's like, I don't know, it's man. The three the three people that he, wa- he was were Charlie Brown, mm-hmm. which was like his miserable part. Yeah. Linus, who's like the philosopher, yep. kind of like. Theologian. You know, a, a way theologian. Too, theologian. Theologian. And then Schroeder. 
yeah. was his work ethic. Oh. And that was his first marriage was just him playing piano all the time. And then Lucy trying to get his attention. He's like, I have to play piano for 10 million hours a day. I don't care. And she's just always trying to get his attention. He's like, I can't. I'm focused on this. That was like the three Didn't even splits think of his about personality. That. Yeah, that's what Schroeder is. Schroeder is like his obsession with being like, I have to keep doing I... this. Like, that's why he gets. That's why that character is a reflection uh... of him. Oh, I feel it so strongly, dude. Uh... Yeah, yeah. And like looking back on the graphic novel I tried writing, I'm like, oh, this is just me, a bunch of me's doing different things. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And interacting once, with each other. Once you. Once you lean into that, yeah. it becomes much e- not easy, but it just becomes you're just like I don't give a shit. Yeah, this, I'm this way. Yeah, I'm, this is how I am. This is one side of my personality. This is another one, and right. I'm just gonna let it run. And it's kind of fun. It's already here. It's kind of, can I get it out, please? Like I think I want to do more of That's, that, where I just yeah. try to get it out because, as we've talked about, sometimes we're just like this stupid head. This this whatever's in here is so frustrating and yeah. annoying that I just how do I get it out? Anyway, that's that's all my perma friends books are like those three characters are just like that's <laughs> it's like the neurotic part of yeah. me, the sort of like goofy idiot part of me. And then like the weird, you know, kind of if I may say like philosophical kind of like yeah. overly intellectual part. Of, that's and it's you. just the three of them arguing about stuff. What do mine say? And that's just every it's all happens in my brain all the time. It's just those three voices fighting with each other. And I'm like, I'll just put them on paper and have them go on adventures. And it's basically it. I'm I got to look at my comics again. There's a yeah. there's a lot of body horror in mine, <laughs> and uh, oh, I mean, listen, we'll save this for another day. But uh, Cat People has some interesting themes in it for sure. Available now. You know, I didn't it. plan on any of the themes, right? You don't. That's the thing yeah. is that you're not planning on it. You just have to know that, like, the, uh, this. Listen, unsolicited advice to everybody who's listening. Yeah. But like, it's not about knowing why. No. But it's just about realizing that there there's a hose, uh-huh. and from that hose, water will come yeah. out. And if you want to water these plants, just take the hose <laughs> and, spray it. and water the plants, spray it over the plants and spray it everywhere. Yeah. Don't ask where does water come from? Yes. What is the psychological reason for hoses to exist? It's just spray the water and leave other people to dissect it to and like sort flowers. of analyze you to look at the flowers. That's what a critic is for. That's not your job. Your job is just to be like, where do I find the, the uh-huh. thing that's turning? And then just use that for the energy and the rest of it will sort itself out. I, that's trusting the process, honestly. That's what it is. That's what they were doing, like what you're yeah. talking about. That's them just getting in the room being like, we have no idea if this is going to be a disaster, right. but we're tapped but we're, enough we're into, into our it. own. We can't stop. Yeah. And whatever comes that's out. That's the muse that you follow. Well, that's something you yep. told me. We could cut all this, but that's something you told me when I was working on my book where I would like <laughs> text you be like, ah, you know, you've done this, help. Uh, and you were like, oh, whatever you do, like, you're going to have a book at the end of this. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Just what comes out, comes out. And that was very helpful. What comes out, comes out. But I like that the hose yes, analogy that... is perfect because it really is. It's like, oh, yeah, do I <laughs> – I don't know what I'm doing. It's just well, I... it's just happening. Here's the thing, too. I'll, I'll just say this. I think uh, this moment in the culture of, of social media and of, like, everybody being like, mental health analysis, blah, blah, blah. And, like, you can – there's more stuff that you watch on YouTube that's an analysis of something that already exists. Yes. As opposed to people creating new things. That's just sort of the way that you engage with it. Uh-huh. So I think there's a tendency to sort of maybe analyze something before it's even anything. Well, then uh, and it just that feels dec- fake. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's like it, it. you have to really like turn it off. Right. And I think like culturally, I don't, culture is maybe not the right word. but Socially? For lack of a better word, like socially, like the broader culture is more interested in analysis of something than they are in the production of something. Well, we want to find meaning um, in things and we want a shortcut right, to Right, instead of just, right. But, you know, the creation of that thing is where you find meaning and it's not a meaning that is broad. It's a meaning that's very specific to whatever yes. it is that you're going through in that moment to make that thing. Right. So that's i feel like i'm now being like now i'm this is awesome. now i'm linus trying to give yeah. no this is the, the, that, that's what i that's what i figured out is what yeah. i'm saying in, in my process of doing stuff that's how you write books it's true that's how you finish projects it's, it is and that thread that from the beginning to the end that's pulling you toward the end yeah like i don't i can't even i don't even know to describe it it's like it's like a it's almost like a like a set inevitable it's fixation it's an inevitable yeah it's like i will end yeah. up here and however i get there I'll figure it out. Yeah. To add to what you're saying is that yeah. Charles Schultz put all these people, these things on paper and, and in these in these specials, these TV specials. And I, I truly believe he didn't mean to, like we were saying. I truly believe he didn't mean to put his psyche in oh, in, no, no, in a way that you can read Not between it. 
And that feels great because I think that's what cartoons, yeah. that's what car- comic art is. It's like, yeah, what you said earlier. And like, I'll look back on my stuff and be like, oh, I was going through something and wouldn't understand it till later. But at the time I'm like, yeah, I'm just going to draw this piece of toast that died in a toaster. <laughs> And uh, That's interesting. Uh, and the other toast that pops out is crying. Like, oh, what is that about? I don't know. But at the time, I was moving. I had a bunch but of stuff going on. And part of my, I was having yeah. a baby. Part of my old self was dying. Part of my new self yeah. was panicking. I like looking at that, being like, oh, that makes sense. But at the time, you're just like, whatever. I just do whatever I want. So I see that in Charles Schultz. I see that in all of these specials he did. And I did. He really means a lot to me. Like, I, I love that he was so yeah. vulnerable. I didn't even know it. That even when he's commissioned to do some like network special, he he can't help it. He can't help but just put himself in it. It's huge, huge, huge inspiration. I, I know exactly how you feel. It's, yeah. it's a thing that, as you know, it's yeah. it's been a source for me for many years. Yeah, for those reasons as well. It's it's so much more than just like pulling away the football. It's like way more complex but and the, it's interesting. The football how... is so important. <laughs> football is so important. It's so that football is like the. It's like the oh the the mountain, the Sisyphus. It's just it's just it's, yeah, futility. It's, it's just that everyone's gonna screw you over. And <laughs> life anyway. We can keep going. The whole Halloween aspect of this is that it's quintessential Halloween. It's quintessential American Halloween, which is funny because you talked about jack o' lanterns, and there's yeah. this is full of jack o' lanterns, and that's very American. And the Great Pumpkin being like this big mythical creature that comes and gives candy and presents to children is just so it's so American and it's so Halloween and like 100 years ago people were not doing this they were like yeah we'll go door to door and like give each other donuts or whatever which rocks rocks <laughs> again again with that the rocks everyone around him is getting candy and just rocks I'm going all over the place so fun facts is that uh the actress who played Sally was like a yeah. six-year-old right they were all they were all mm-hmm. kids because <laughs> they're all kids. Yeah. <laughs> Melendez was like, I would hate watching an adult do a kid's voice. <laughs> like the way he's right. Yeah. The way Bill Melendez talks 100% is so good because he's just this. And you're like, yeah, you're grumpy. And right. You're right. Uh, and he's like, what? I can't listen to adults talk like children, which you know, he's right. And so they were very specific. So they got some kids from their neighborhood, too, like. And so they mm-hmm. like friends, kids would come in and, and, and Sally, the kid who plays her, uh, of course, I didn't yeah. write her name down, um, had a really loose tooth the whole time and <sighs> she couldn't pronounce some of the words. So like sir, they had to like cut bits of a word from each take and put it together yeah. to make the word put together. Yeah. Uh, and then That's awesome. one night her mom calls like late at night and she's like, bro, this tooth is coming out tonight and she's going to have a lisp. What do you want to do? And they're like, bring her in. So at like midnight, the six poor six oh. year old gets brought into the studio to record the rest of her lines, and then her tooth falls out. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? That's awesome. Yeah, she's just like her mom's like, okay, hey, well, what do you want to do? <laughs> poor, that's amazing. I just ma- I can't imagine. Also, good on her for calling to to like yeah. calling them and being like, I don't want to screw this up. Instead of just showing up the next day, being like, by the way, her tooth fell out. Oh, they could have just given her like a prosthetic. Or something to maybe cover yeah. some of it, if it like, would help her enunciate the words. I don't know. But I don't imagine they had that kind of budget for it. Um, no, I don't think they did. They, they had, a, I think the budget was 170000 It was very low. Um, very small, yeah. As far as the blockbuster aspect of it goes, this did better yeah. than the Christmas one and All Stars. Half of the country watched it live. You don't get that anymore. That's like more than the Olympics yes. or like the presidential debates. Half of the country. And of Super course, Bowl. the studio, yeah, the studio was there. The network was like, oh, awesome. Of course, you pulled it off. Woo, blockbuster. And this, yeah, we never doubted really, you. Really like tired, bedra- bedraggled, yeah. like team of people. But you know, Charles Schultz would have done it anyway. But the part where Charlie Brown gets a bunch of rocks made so many kids that watched it really sad that they, mm-hmm. they mailed candy to the <laughs> network for Charlie Brown. Which was sweet because it's like, yeah, that's like empathy right there. Oh, this is the first time. Sno- another fun fact: another time, the first time Snoopy got up on his hind legs. So he usually walked on all fours, and then oh, this one okay. is the first time they animated him walking. Anyway, I can't find the budget, but it was like maybe two hundred thousand, and uh, it there's sh- nothing basically. Yeah, nothing. And oh, the, the word was restitution. Sally was like, could not oh, say okay. restitution. Yeah, yeah. Restitution. And so they like 
splice it together. This is crazy because the Halloween specials weren't a thing, right? At all. No one cared about Halloween until this. This spurred every show, program, everyone started doing Halloween episodes, which went on to shape this entire country's like way of celebrating Halloween. And yeah, I think that's amazing. And I can't believe it was the 60s. Yeah. It is timeless, dude. It's so timeless. Oh, yeah. All those ones are. Even the, the Charlie Brown Christmas is still timeless. It is. And I don't even care about Christmas. I know. I didn't celebrate Christmas and I still watched really? it. Really? And everyone's always. Yeah. It's the funny thing to me about that one is people are like, oh, but that one's like so religious. And I was like, yeah, that's why I liked yeah. it. Yeah. Not because I'm religious, but because I liked the fact that Charlie Brown was like, this is bullshit. Yeah. Like, this is a religious. Like, yeah. I always felt like people were gaslighting me being like, no, Christmas is just like an American. I was like, no, it's uh-uh. not. It's a religious holiday. It is. And Charlie Brown was the only one who was like, dude, this is about Jesus. Right. And I'm like, yes. It is about Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, finally, someone said it. <laughs> yep. Yep. So, no, those specials are all great. I think they're all on Apple. They are. Now, they're on I'm Apple. Not yeah. I think that's the new. Um, mm-hmm. <clears throat> Well, that's my tab on The Great Pumpkin. Everybody go watch it. I love it. Yeah. Anytime you want to talk about Charles Schultz for like three hours at a I'll time, I am there. Yeah. I'll do a live stream where I just talk about like, everything I know and I'm in love with time with Charles Schultz. I can I've thought a lot about this man and I've thought a lot yeah. about his work and what it means to me. I can write quite a bit. I had not. Or I can say quite a bit. I had not really gotten into him. I knew like the basics, but um, yeah, I was more just like the comics hearing about him I, I feel like he's a kindred spirit a little bit like yeah i think you've been bit by the bug in the exact same way yeah. that i was from hearing you talk about it i'm like yep i know exactly yeah. what you i'm like that's exactly how i how i felt it what too, a le- for sure what a legend absolute <laughs> legend also okay i think it's snoopy so like the last comic that he does it's it's either the last comic or the like the week of the last comic like because well, also before, he dies he drew up until he died like, he was like no, I think he drew and then like the last published con, like, but like he didn't do them the day he died. Of but, course, like, yeah. His con- the last day it published, I think he died like the next day or something. Whoa! Uh, it was like this weird synchronicity where oh, it lined up, but gotta... it was like something. I feel like they're having a snow. I don't remember. It's the last one or like one of the last ones where here it is. They're having a snowball fight, and then Snoopy's holding a snowball, and he's just like, and it was at that moment he realized his father never taught him how to throw a snowball or something like deeply weirdly sad about it oh yeah oh my gosh is that the one it's a not a snowball it's a football or no there's a, there's a, a snowball like... a baseball and a football is that the one yeah um no i i can't i'll find we'll find it we'll put it up but uh anyway wh- whichever one that one is it was it maybe it was a football oh, i thought it was a snowball you know, here's what it is they're like is he because he had planned this as his last comic and they were like is he finally gonna get to kick the football and Ch- charles schultz yeah. was like no no yeah uh i couldn't have charlie brown kick that football that would be a terrible disservice to him after nearly half a century apparently he regretted that yeah <laughs> like and he felt bad I He's hearing like, some I story he was, yeah he was just like i should have yeah well no I, he was I, like i'm gonna die and i never let charlie brown kick the football and he was like what would have been the harm to let him do it like no i don't i think that would have i think he's right Sometimes people no, never. I'm saying he said that. I know. He was like, I should. He was like, I should have. But I think he was right in the first place to to not let him kick it because like some people never get to kick the football. That's just life. It's true, but I think it, it was interesting though. Yeah, that, like that was his big regret of it. His regret. His regret. Yeah. Anyway, anyway yes, yeah. Charlie Schultz, Sparky, love it, love the, love the whole tab. Thank you for that. Yeah, that was um, fun. How should we now? I feel like our way of closing tabs should be. Uh, Getting the football pulled out from underneath you and slipping and sliding and falling. <laughs> or I was thinking maybe something like um, with the devil. Sure. Um, yeah. The let's devil see. being like wasted or something. Oh, we could throw the tabs in a bog. In a, in yeah, a swamp. some in a bog. Like, let's do it. Like, and then the catch is fire. <laughs> yeah. Because Jack is there. Yeah. Yeah. All let's right. just like plop of a bog. Yeah. Okay. I have so many tabs open for oh, this one. Oh, same. <laughs> it's bad. So many. I did a lot of tabs for this. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, why don't you count us down? All right. Three, two, one. Close it. Close those tabs. I'm going to close like six of them. All right. Moving on to listener emails. I believe you're up first. Uh, You went first. So. Oh, I went first. I lied. You're right. I forgot. you were. Sp- I thought you were going to go first, and then you did not. We just did your tab. Hi, I'm smart. I'm caught. I'm catching up. <laughs> no. Uh, our first email is from Charlie from Vancouver. Charlie? 
really Charlie. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, hi, Hannah and Kava. Thank you for this wonderful podcast. I came across it while listening to House of Pod recently, oh, hey. and I have been hooked ever since. Hey. Welcome. Wonderful. Other Kave. Yeah. Thank you, Other Kave. Uh, he's the gift that keeps on giving, Dr. Hoda. <laughs> I have ADHD and 500 <laughs> open tabs makes me feel incredibly seen. Oh, we don't, we don't have it. <laughs> yeah. No, not at all. Uh, I have a site I return to often as it is a fertile ground where I harvest new <laughs> crops of open tabs regularly. Love this person. <laughs> Love this. Wait. Um, funny enough. Wait. Have you ever heard of the Great Pumpkin Commonwealth? What? Is this a Great Pumpkin themed? It's. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Okay. It's not a gathering for fans of Charlie Brown Halloween oh. cartoons. No, the Great Pumpkin Commonwealth is the organization or is the organization to set the rules and regulations for competitive giant pumpkin growing competitions around the world. Cool. That's. These annual tradition. No, no. Go I was going to say, have say? you seen some of those pumpkins that they grow? They get insane. Huge. They get insane, yeah. like bigger than houses yeah. almost. Um, these annual competitions include prizes for heaviest tomato, <laughs> long gourds, and the Howard Dill Prettiest Giant Pumpkin Award. But of course, the main event is the Giant Atlantic Pumpkin Weigh-Offs. Currently, world record is a 2,702-pound pumpkin grown in Italy by Stefano Cutruppi. Wait, 2,700 2700 pounds. 2,700 pounds and I... in Italy. I can't even comprehend that. That's like it's more than pretty... a car by far. Yeah, I think that's uh yeah, that's like about a that's more than a ton. <laughs> but... It's more than a Insane. ton. Insane. One of my favorite things about the source of this tab is that since the Great Pumpkin Commonwealth is worldwide, there's an annual way off in my area that I attend. I could go into the lore of some local pumpkin stars, giant pumpkin stars, but I already feel like this email is too long. Anyways, I hope you have a good time reading no, this. No, no. Thank Say that again. Gord. Gord. Oh, I thought that was a typo. No. Gord. Oh, 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 my bad. Uh, I hope you have a gourd time reading nice. this. I missed the pun. Thank you for sharing your delightful interest with the world. All the best. Charlie. Thanks, Charlie. Uh, listen, I'm going to send you a picture of the... J <laughs> this thing is... Oh, my God. Is this the Italian guy's pumpkin? Yeah, I'm going to text it to you right now so you can see it. This thing is just, just, uh, just gigantic. That pumpkin looks unhappy. Whoa. I don't think pumpkins are meant. They're just like, I don't want to be here. That thing wanted to die a long time ago. Like, absolutely. This looks like it's been hooked up to like a ventilator and they're just barely, they're just yep. keeping it alive just enough for its family to come say goodbye to it. Okay. That is insane. That's okay. Oh, so I, I always accidentally leave my pumpkins out all year after Halloween until they, uh -huh. until they rot into the ground. Just Im sure. imagine this rotting and how much rotten pumpkin that would be. Quite a lot. Quite a lot. That's like, uh, yeah. That is know. massive. I I how much Look how is. proud that guy is. He's so proud of his pumpkin. He should be. How do they get it to be uh, that anyway, big? I don't know. They just give it like steroids and <laughs> HGH <laughs> and they feed it whey protein yeah. and then it does cold, cold plunges mm -hmm. and it goes cup, into the cup, sauna cupping. and then they go back and forth. Cupping, they do a lot of, um, I don't know. Make, what is make a deal with the devil. I don't know. Make a deal with the devil, yeah. Crow milk. Jack O'Lantern. Wait, what is in. it? Crow, Crow, yeah. Fight, fight milk. milk. <laughs> fight milk. Fight. Feed a lot of fight milk. Uh, okay, well, mine is from, uh, well, he'll, he'll tell us. Hey, Hannah and Kaveh, long time listener, first time caller, Adam from Nebraska. My tab is brought to you by Hannah's tab on time capsules. Anna. Hearing about the crypt of civilization being one of the largest shook something loose in my brain and reminded me that the largest time capsule in the world is just a few miles away from me in Seward, ne Nebraska. The capsule was certified by Guinness World Records, but the crypt argued that theirs was larger. And to settle the argument... So the crypt got in like an argument with the with Guinness. Crypt of civilization. I would like to think that the crypt itself yeah, got it's on like the her. Line. It's like her. It's like a monster house, like just getting yes. up with like its limbs. There's a video of Hitler in here. Yeah. Uh, or a, a recording. But the crypt argued that theirs was larger, and to settle the argument, Guinness removed the category altogether. But not to be oh. <laughs> yeah, but not to be outdone, the time Eddie. time capsule was expanded to make sure it was the largest, <laughs> built by a local man named Harold Keith Davison who wanted to make sure his grandkids would know how his life in the 1970s was. 
Some of what was included was a brand new Chevy Vega and a teal leisure suit with yellow flowers embroidered on it. Yeah. Enclosed is a giant cement pyramid. It is due to be opened this coming year, 2025. <gasps> Thanks for making the podcast. It's a fantastic way to spend time while I should be productive at work. Adam. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Adam. I'm uh, glad you enjoy it. Imagine being insane enough to be like, this is going to be my crypt and it's going to be a time capsule. And I'm going to put a car in there. It sounds like something you'd do if you had access to a Yeah. Crypt. Thank you for listening. Yes. Thank you guys for listening. If you have a uh, tab of your own that you'd like to submit to listener emails, please email us at 500opentabs at gmail.com. That's 500. Uh, give us a quick little blurb. Mm-hmm. Send us the article and let us know where you're from. Yeah. And additionally, we are still taking submissions for voice memos. If you want to write that all up and then speak it, we can play the voice memo on the air and people will be excited because they'd be like, hey, that's a real person whose voice exists rather than uh, reading an email that we could have made up. It's not fake. We could have made it up. You don't know. But if I if you read it, then that we know that it's not made up. And if you want to follow us on Instagram, you can do the same at 500 open tabs number five zero zero. And also on YouTube, uh, which is getting to be really to like we've been getting really into like making it visually like yeah. fun. And there's a lot of really cool things there that you guys I think you'd like. Um, subscribe to the YouTube, yep. subscribe to the Patreon, yeah. subscribe to the Discord, subscribe to everything. Leave us reviews, follow the sponsor links, yeah. do what you can. If you, very important, if a friend recommended this to you. Or you heard it like our friend in the last email who heard it, who heard us on another oh, sorry heard another podcaster on our show. Go ahead and recommend it to a friend yeah. as well. Keep the chain going. Let somebody else know. We're trying to get as many people as we can to learn about this podcast. And podcasts are pretty much only word of mouth. Yeah. it seems so. Yep. Tell uh-huh. whoever you can if there's something that was interesting in either in this episode uh-huh. or another episode that you've listened to and you bring it up at a cocktail party. Tell them to listen to it. Or if you even go to cocktail parties, your brother and you used to watch The Great Pumpkin. Send it to him. Or, yeah, or if you are jack o' lantern, yeah. and you, or if you too have deceived the devil multiple times, yeah, tell your friends. Yeah, if you're in a bog, if you're in a bog Dude, with a jack o' lantern, tell your tell, bog friends. Tell people who come into the bog. Yeah, tell people who come in and are <laughs> drowning in the bog. There's just as you're dying, you should listen to this podcast. <laughs> and just like bog body lifts itself <laughs> out, and just five hundred open, five hundred open tabs. You know they talked about me on an episode of Five Hundred Open <laughs> Tabs lately. Have you heard of that? It has like a goofy American voice in the middle of Irish bogs. Anyway, uh, yeah, uh, that's all. I believe that takes us to the end. Uh, we'll be back next week. I hope I mean, that the world doesn't collapse. Yeah. It's going to be an interesting week coming up. It's There's the one that everyone's worried about. Some, you know, voting that needs to be done. So go ahead and vote. Yay, good luck. Vote. Take deep Take deep breaths or whatever. I don't know. Whatever yeah. you do to be calm. Hopefully uh, it doesn't all fall apart. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, I'm Hopefully a bit nervous, both of our rights aren't taken away. But whatever, whatever. That's, that comes later. Yeah. That comes later. Uh, anyway, thank you guys for listening. Uh, and in the meantime, have a spooky, safe Halloween. Yes. And soon is Nixon Jetier five times. <laughs> no. That was him. Really.